how to make your very own fully fledged electronic component tester from a bag of bits. I'm very grateful to the people that have bought this tester. It's gonna help you guys out a lot. But I looked back at the previous video and I thought, that's not very clear. Let's make a better one. And we've made a slight adjustment to the circuit, uh, which I'm gonna show in this video. In this section, I'll explain how to put together the circuit board. I appreciate that for some of you, this is like teaching you to suck eggs. If you think this bit's too easy, just skip ahead. There's a very important part coming up on the microcontroller. So you can start anywhere with what you want in the circuit. Well, we'll start with R1. Uh, so R1, as indicated by the drawing, is our 4R7 resistor. And we're gonna place that into the R1 slot on the circuit board, which is just underneath the IC. Uh, one useful thing to do, uh, this is gonna save a lot of clutter after, is if you bend and cut the long legs of the components, the components will actually stay in the circuit board. That way, there's less cutting to do after, and it's neater. For R2, we'll grab our 100 ohm resistor and stick it into R2, which is just above the IC. And again, Steve cuts, cuts off the legs now, as he will do for all of these components. For our resistor 3 and resistor 4, we have two 2K2 resistors that will go in R3 and R4, just above R2, if you can spot that one. Steve's demonstrating this perfectly because he's very neat and all of his stuff looks much better than mine. Onto our diodes, you should have three BZX84s. The first of those diodes, uh, we want to place in diode one. If you can see that, that is just above the the bank of three resistors that you placed in. As you already know, mind the polarity on the diodes. So just match up the stripe on the diode with the stripe on the circuit board. Easy, right? Then we'll stick the other two BZX84s into diode five position on the circuit board. And the last of the BZX84s, uh, we're gonna place into D2 position on the circuit board. Then we'll grab our two BAT85 diodes and we'll place one of these in our D3 slot on the circuit board and we'll place the other BAT85 into a D4 position on the circuit board. And that concludes our components and with the op amp IC, we'll align the cutout on the circuit board with the little dot on the actual IC itself, as you can see in this video, Steve demonstrates it perfectly. The next step is quite an important step, so I appreciate if you're listening to this one, otherwise everything might just go wrong. So cut yourself two rows of the seven yellow pins, and here's an important bit that you probably should do. You don't have to, but it's gonna save you some issues. So what Steve does here is he uses his snips to pull out to pull out four of the pins, leaving the yellow bit still intact, so that we so that we're left with four metal less in headers. And we'll cut them into two, so that we have two groups of two. And what you want to do with these is slide them onto each end of your pins, as Steve does in the video here. And you'll actually see why this is important later. This is great because it keeps them pins together, but also it's, it's important so that we don't solder the circuit board in contact with the reset pin. Uh, so look on your microcontroller and notice where it says A7 and C4. So you want to align your pins so that they run down from A7 to ground and from C4 to AC3. And just make sure you're looking at the reset and the boot dip switches side of the microcontroller. And with that out of the way, Steve's kindly set up his station so that we can clearly see how he solders 
because we're showing you how to make this tester from start to finish, we thought we might as well include this. By all means, skip ahead. Uh, but if you're a beginner building this, I recommend watching how Steve carries out his solders just to get yourself a good idea of what you can do yourself. Uh, one very important thing that we'll point out is when you're soldering the pins into the microcontroller board, make sure that you solder them on as straight as possible. This is going to be very important uh, when you're trying to align the display with your circuit board. There is, there is ever so slight room for error, but just bear in mind that this might be one of the reasons that uh, that your display might not be lining up correctly. In the video, Steve straightens out his pins and what I just explained is the reason for why he does that. Finally, another very important chapter. So Steve is just soldering on his two wires. You don't have to use the wires that we provided in the kits. Sometimes those wires might be a bit too long. The best wires we found for this were single strand wires. We found that multi-strand conductors uh, get quite brittle, especially if you're not turning the ends right. But of course you guys know this. Now then, when we solder the circuit board onto the microcontroller, just keep checking that we're straight on and that we're not pressed up against the reset button. If we're pressed up against the reset button, we might get put in a reset loop and our program will never start. So Steve's quite happy that it's straight enough and he carries on soldering the rest. Now pretty much the last bit of kit to solder on, let's grab our header pins and you want to cut yourself 8 header pins. It's best to solder them on at this stage and just make sure these are straight enough as well uh, because if not they might cause problems when you're aligning your display. And to finish off your octo tester, let's assemble it all. So this bit's pretty much self-explanatory. We'll get onto the we'll get onto the modification to the circuit in a little bit. As you would have guessed from the base, if we grab our circuit board soldered up and we place it underneath the hooks with the with this socket facing the cutout. And all you have to do is and prop it down and it's made to be a push fit so it should stay should stay in there securely. I'd also recommend cutting these leads down to get in the way when they're so long. They're quite unnecessarily long in this in this case. Then you can place in your two banana sockets. So just make sure that you screw on this ring before you solder anything on. And then this is where this new circuit comes in. And what we've done is we've added a fuse. This is just a one amp fuse and it's used to protect all of this circuit board, including what's connected on this side, from what you're testing on this side. So a word of caution is to never test on uh, potentially live circuits um, and potentially energized circuits. So if you're testing capacitors that are energized, it might lead to this blowing up. So instead, it can blow up this fuse. So what you can do with this fuse is solder it into position TL2 on the circuit board. So TL2 is this right hand side one here. And that corresponds to the red uh, banana socket there. So you've got two ways of doing this really. It's what you prefer. You can probably get away with using this fuse instead of your wire uh, by soldering one end into the circuit board and one end into the banana socket here. What I'd probably recommend to do is if you cut both ends and then you solder this onto the banana socket, then that way you can solder this onto the top of the fuse, uh, like sort of like that. 
So it's either or. This is your tester, so you can do whatever you please with it. But all I will say is that we've put this fuse in there for a reason. Uh, we've, we haven't had any uh, testers that have blown up as of yet, uh, but it doesn't mean it might not happen, and it definitely will happen when you place your probes on something that's live or energized. And then this bit's also pretty self-explanatory. For your display, just place the pin side underneath the hooks, and then the other side just pushes down, and then you can place this like that. Okay, and that's your octa tester done. And let me know if you have any issues in the comments below. We'll do our best to try and resolve them.